Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Professor Norman Cornett, art critic, curator, and religious studies scholar. I'm with the artist Giuseppe De Leo in one of his most recent works, and I invite you to discover all of his art on the website, GiuseppeDeLeoDrawing.com, and I'll spell that for you. G-I-U-S-E-P-P-E D-I-L-E-O-D-R-A-W-I-N-G dot com. Giuseppe De Leo, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. You have titled this work, originally in French, Courant de Soin, I would translate that, as Stream of Healing. Um, and I've recently learned that you dedicated this work, your inspiration came from your mother and her passing. And her passing, absolutely right. Um, stream of giving, of caring, of, of helping. Um, in her last couple of years, I've spent much time with her. Mm -hmm. uh, she was in, in, a, in a residence. And then when my dad passed away, who was the primary caregiver to her, we moved her out to my sister's place where we shared um, looking out after her. Mm -hmm. And we spent much time, and I've learned so much about the, the process of actually being with an elderly person, uh, caring for her. She was somebody mobile uh, mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. And, um, and that, uh, just that making time for her, uh, dedicating time towards her, making sure that she was comfortable, knowing that she was in her you know, early 90s and then she was not well. That was really of great concern to me. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I could, that I was able to, I felt that at that moment I could use some of that experience that I've undergone in, in, in sharing moments mm -hmm. with her, times with her, making sure that the story that she would recount, I would then, you know, uh, assimilate mm -hmm. the story that I would record, uh, that I would, you know, remember, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before her passing. So this drawing basically is essentially dedicated to my mom, but it also deals with all of us, all of us who have actually gone through that period of, of loss and mourning and, 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 and grieving, especially during a time of you know, the pandemic, where there was a lot of um, uh, isolation, alienation, seeing mm -hmm. doctors was not easily accessible. Mm -hmm. So we had all that kind of turmoil to kind of deal with. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm hoping that, the, that, that, that that sensation is, is, is then represented in the drawing. Well, when I look at this composition, which integrates um, uh, graphite, uh, color pencil, and liquid uh, charcoal, charcoal yes. um, could you talk to us about liquid charcoal? This is not a medium that we often encounter in the fine arts. That's exactly. It's, it's, it's a relatively new medium. It's been around, but not that long. And I've, um, ex you know, I've encountered it just looking for new material to work with, mm -hmm. with new experiences, uh, new mm -hmm. attitudes. You know, I, I was hoping that my ideas would speak through the medium. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so liquid uh, graphite and liquid charcoal are relatively new. But the charcoal was quite in interesting because it would react differently than the way one would use ink, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in terms of creating washes. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the, the unexpected nature. Uh, you know, one really wasn't sure how it would somehow you know, settle onto a certain kind of paper. So I allowed that to be a kind of learning thing for me. Mm -hmm. At the same time as, you know, as I was, you know, um, learning how to kind of deal with an, an elderly person mm -hmm. in certain kind of ways, you know, nurses mm -hmm. would come over and would tell me how to kind of properly adjust and, 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 and uh, up to, to make the individual comfortable. The, the, the liquid, you know, charcoal, the kind of base, uh, that comes in a kind of a shoe polish kind of, you know, form mm -hmm. and you would kind of lather it up and, mm -hmm. and apply it. Um, it gave me this possibility of my thoughts going through the medium, thinking through the medium, mm -hmm. think, thinking through the plane, the surface, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and um, I then, you know, exposed myself to that. And I worked the, the, uh, the, the liquid, the you know, charcoal with colored material, with graphite, so there would be more of a kind of blending or integration. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing would be somewhat more cohesive, cohesively mm -hmm. more, say, mm -hmm. structured. And here is an example, is That's it right, not? Yeah. Of, of the liquid charcoal. I'm surmising 
that you like to conduct experiments in the properties of the materials with which you work. That's correct, and that is true. Because, you know, essentially, you know, one spends much time creating um, descriptions of forms, but I'm also very much taken by the medium itself having its own, exposing its own properties, the way it would somehow bleed or blend into other mm -hmm. things. It's rather the unknown. Mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. allows for more of an intuitive response. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. My drawings are not essentially, especially these ones, really planned out to that degree. I allow for surprises to take over. And this is what gets me somewhat excited about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, carrying on a dialogue mm -hmm. with the work. Mm -hmm. you know, one response to what happened. The drawing mm -hmm. tells me this is what mm -hmm. happened right now, um, and, and it creates this kind of, say, quality on the surface. I then have to either accept it, deny it, challenge mm -hmm. it, respond, Mm -hmm. caress it, work with it. Mm -hmm. So here what we have is this kind of a, re a reciprocity in terms of this kind of exchange, mm -hmm. like a dialogue with the material, with the medium. Mm -hmm. And I'm intrigued that you're using liquid charcoal because I've noticed previously in your work mm -hmm. you're quite intrigued with biology. One of the first principles of biology is the property, the phenomena of osmosis. Mm -hmm. So when we look here, I yeah, get the yeah. sense that you're experimenting to what degree does the paper absorb, assimilate, integrate this medium of liquid charcoal? Well, it's, um, you decide to a certain degree how much liquid mm -hmm. you're going to, um, in this case here, water, you're going mm -hmm. to you know, apply and use with, with the charcoal, how, how charged your brushes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and then the quality of paper, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, a paper that is suitable such as watercolor paper or mm -hmm. a paper, you know, used for essentially for printmaking. Mm -hmm. These have different kind of structural properties. And mm -hmm. then the liquid, uh, you know, will then either pool or what have you. And at that moment, I begin to kind of play around with that uh, and, and to move it around so that it could create effects that are intriguing. Mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, familiar in a certain kind of way and yet mm -hmm. unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for those marks those surfaces you know the way the water and the charcoal binds and evaporates that that, that gives me a kind of aha a mm -hmm. new kind of sensation in mm -hmm. terms of appreciating the, you know the uh, the mark so the so so the the osmosis effect the airiness this fumato element mm -hmm. okay, the the haziness speaks to me in that way of creating a sense of distance the marks as a pencil mark would rest on the paper mm -hmm. at times it may appear to be not floating, but you know, on the surface. Whereas when I'm using liquid in this kind of manner, it kind of creates a more deepening, uh, you mm -hmm. know, perspective in terms of the space with, with the distant fog or distant haze, mm -hmm. atmospheric mm -hmm. perspective in a way. It's minimally used here, mm -hmm. but I do enjoy it. Uh, and and it's, it's in other areas too that have been then worked or concealed with graphite and color pencil. The color marks along in here all have, you know, liquid graphite underneath. The swirls and the kind of brush strokes along in there deal with the kind of uh, uh, liquid, you know, charcoal. I'm sorry, I said liquid graphite. I meant liquid charcoal, um, and, and, and it kind of plays, and it allows for unexpected surprises. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm and I'm searching for that all the time. It's mm -hmm. part of the navigating. Mm -hmm. And the liquid charcoal, as we see here, mm -hmm. um, this gives something very unique in this composition to my mind, mm -hmm. the, the stream of healing, namely that it is nebulous, it is vague, it is amorphous. Absolutely. It, yes. It's something shape-shifting. Uh, mm -hmm. shape yeah. And I, that's part, I believe, of the material base of creating the sense of mystery. Uh, because you seem to work again and again, almost like a leitmotif in, in the operatic mm -hmm. sense. This, this sense of, yes, it's the human condition, but building on the human condition to create, quite literally, transcendence. That's absolutely, yes. <clears throat> and the human condition, I mean, in terms mm -hmm. of, as you mentioned, the unexpected element mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, of transcendent and also of transience too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's kind of changes going on in here uh, in, in the work. There's the notion of movement, mm -hmm. uh, shifting, as you as you mentioned. But also, if I could then begin to kind of go back to to what I was experiencing, 
you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, with 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 taking care of of of, of uh, healing and, and caring for an individual, that was a a, a shift change for for me, mm -hmm. and it was again. Mm -hmm. uh, uncertain, it was nebulous. I mean, mm -hmm. the elements were there, mm -hmm. but the timing was uncertain. The, the, the amount of attention, uh, it, it, you know, uh, how long, how much, to what degree, mm -hmm. that was essentially a new thing all the time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought of maybe working with something that in this particular case would give me that understanding, mm -hmm. that, you know, that would somehow illuminate that kind of experience. Yeah. Now, I have to confess to you, uh, Giuseppe De Leo. When I first encountered, and the word is not too strong, encountered this composition, I said, what is going on here? This is so awkward. This is so unnatural. Mm -hmm. This is like teetering. This is like walking a tightrope. I don't know that I've ever seen a man and a woman or a, any two human beings quite in this position. It's it made me think of the U2 song, With or Without, Without You. you. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I wasn't thinking of that at all. Um, you know, in this particular case, I wanted something light, something playful. Um, ah. Something that would somehow bring a, a sense of hope and relief, hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, people have seen this show, have been around, they say, oh, uh, well, this is Adam and Eve. Yeah, and yeah. Together in paradise. Yeah. I wasn't thinking of that at all, but then when I look at it now, I'm like, oh, okay. But that was, that was the first thing from my mind, mm -hmm. essentially. And I've had um, this couple pose, you know, for me, and there were so ah, many, oh yeah, so many ah. different, oh no, this is my creation. There's so many different positions. But I, I particularly liked the part, uh, or the, um, the, the image uh, of the couple, where her arm, her hand is resting just yeah. on his neck. Yeah. Within that, in, in a kind of very gentle way, and the hands couple up in this kind of way, kind of blocking, interlocking. You know, exactly, and, uh -huh. and and the gentleness, the mm. the sense of, of 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 sweetness, if you will, decried uh, my time with my mom. Mm. You know, I, I mean, it, 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 yes, it was heavy and and, and and difficult, but at the same time, that sensation of 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 of, of giving towards her, of, 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 of feeling her sweetness, her mm. love, mm -hmm. you know, was really important. And I understand, mm. well, how, do I, how does one deal with all of this, you know, without making a very direct, you know, say, portrait of, of that situation? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a kind of metaphor for uh, how we should respond, you know, mm -hmm. essentially the stream of healing, of caring mm -hmm. for one mm -hmm. another in a certain mm -hmm. kind of way. Here you've got an individual carrying a, another, uh, interlocked in this kind of playful way. It's a sunny day. I mean, there's kind of light, there's kind of hope in, in, in a situation where these plants are vibrant, uh, uh, and theorians, and, and, you know, and, and, and provide us with, with a faithful understanding of what we can do towards one another. Hmm. Hmm. That's part of where the caring or yes. the healing yes. uh, mm -hmm. of the title comes in. Um, when I look at this work, I, Interestingly for me, uh, Giuseppe De Leo, you often seem to have an epicenter, a touchstone in the composition. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, the eye cannot avoid That's right. the epicenter. Yeah. Uh, right here, immediately, visually, we focus on this. Mm -hmm. Why did you put this vibrant, red, passionate, very present flower front and center in the composition? Uh, uh, stream of healing? Well, um, these are um, plants, um, a particular plant that is um, amongst many others uh, that uh, were given to me mm -hmm. by former students as a gift. Uh -huh. uh, my mom received those, and I still have quite a you know, few around, uh -huh. and they're huge now. They're, they're kind of, and, and they're quite very strong, and, and they're a, a really cogent reminder, a powerful reminder uh -huh. of, 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 of this idea of gifting, of giving. So ah. they, they appear in this kind of way, and I could have dumbed them down or, or, or slowed them down a little bit, but I really wanted this kind of element to come across, like, you know, this strong form, and I wanted somehow to move away from the attention given to the figures, which by themselves, they all have so much going on in terms of attracting your attention because of their, their form, their, their figures, and they're drawn in such a way that they're, they're quite very descriptive. Mm -hmm. And I somehow wanted that, that the attention to kind of be uh, somehow to be, to be diffused away from these mm -hmm. elements along mm -hmm. in here. So this was an interesting 
very kind of perhaps maybe an experimental way of diverting attention from these two large kind of forces. Something more whimsical in a certain yeah. kind of way, <laughs> but botanical, more and, and nature naturally, you know, forms, you know, that that uh, that deal with again a moment of, of, of life and death. I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, these flowers here are dying, okay, and they're at the precipice. I mean, this is what's going to end up happening. And the aha moment of, uh, of uh, the uh, mono no aware, uh, you would also see it in there too, mm -hmm. in terms of this kind of sensation of, of the, 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 the beauty of, and the, and the, of impermanence and of change. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned in this regard, whimsical. And with respect yes. to the couple, the playfulness. Yes. So do I understand thereby that for you, the recourse to laughter, to humor, to playfulness is in effect a way of dealing with grief? Absolutely. And it's very, very critical. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and this is what essentially I, we need to, um, to, you know, to kind of hang on to, you know, the, the more, say, uplifting, spirited element of, 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 in terms of memory of, of the mm -hmm. people that we cared for. Mm -hmm. And this is how I would like to remember individuals in this, in this kind of way, mm -hmm. the, that aspect of their, of their best nature, of, of their, their kind of laughter, their smile, their sense of levity, um, and, mm -hmm. their, um, and their, uh, say, uh, and the impact that they've had mm -hmm. on us, on, you know, my, on myself and my, and my siblings. Um, that, is, that is critical. And I, I and I felt I would like and I wanted to somehow bring that across in, in particular other places to kind of distribute that, that sensation of of, of of enthusiastic of carnival enthusiasm uh, right through the you know the, the work to some degree. And when I look at the composition structurally, essentially we have two bookends here right, yes. and here, and X marks the spot here. Right, exactly. Dare I ask, does this flower? It's rare. When I encounter your work, Giuseppe De Leo, it's rare to see such a vibrant, mm -hmm. strong, present color and form. Is this an archetype of your mother? <laughs> I guess you must have met her at one point in time. Absolutely. She was a matriarchy. She was a very powerful um, individual, um, strict, uh, you know, very religious, mm -hmm. you know, followed mm -hmm. the Christian, you know, the Catholic faith to a degree and made sure that I somehow stayed straight in that way. So, I mean, and she worked hard all her life from mm -hmm. beginning to the very end. I mean, mm -hmm. even her passing was hard, but it was an easy thing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, absolutely. She, she's at the core of my beliefs, of my, of my you know, of, of my essence, if you will. Mm. And speaking of your mother, I, I'm intrigued by... Here we have, again, these intricate, complex, enmeshed, intermeshed, interlocked forms mm -hmm. that morph into a grid that I can recognize uh, this is nature, but this is culture. culture. I see the human intervention here. And I'm intrigued that you superimpose of obviously human grid on nature. Mm -hmm. Could you respond to this, what seems to me a dialectic? Well, this is interesting. Um, uh, yes, well, essentially, culture, my mom was a seamstress. Mm -hmm. She spent all her life, you know, mm -hmm. um, creating uh, clothing for, uh, for her neighbors, for us, mm -hmm. uh, for my sister. And, um, and, and, and this consumed her life to such a degree. I mean, it was her way of being very creative. It's her mm -hmm. way of somehow, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, giving back and serving the community, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was rooted into that. Hence mm -hmm. the roots, you know, the tree, you know, mm -hmm. of, of this particular, you know, type, uh, rooted. And, and, and I found that the, the, the notion of culture and nature, mm -hmm. in this particular case, comes together quite, quite beautifully. Because it reminds me, I mean, culture, artistic, creativity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and nature in terms of the, mm -hmm. the actual natural forms. There was a certain kind of, you know, very close relationship to the intricacies of how she would work and, 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 and conduct her life, mm -hmm. you know, within the Italian community, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. She 
didn't speak very much English or French mm -hmm. because within the community, one didn't have to go very far. I mean, everything was right there. Mm -hmm. And then she had us to kind of go and help her, mm -hmm. you know, select patterns or materials or, you know, mm -hmm. thread to kind of work together. So the sinewy tissue of the roots reminded me of the thread, of a threading of a creation. Mm -hmm. As the roots begin to somehow find their way into, mm -hmm. into the earth, to kind of you know bring forth life. Mm -hmm. My mom's life was consumed by the culture of actually embroidering, sewing, stitching mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. herself and for others. And my relatives and my uncle and mm -hmm. my dad all worked in the uh, in the clothing business. Mm -hmm. And in this series of works, um, there are con reoccurring motifs, light motifs that come mm -hmm. again and again and again. They could be vines. They could be branches, they could be twigs, they could be um, shrubs, and they're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. If I understand correctly, also, Giuseppe De Leo, as a young boy, you went with your mother to choose fabrics, right. to choose threads, right. to choose materials, to right. choose cloth. So, and actually, uh, it's mm. very interesting, the word text, as in textile, right. means links. Yes. Much of your work is about the links absolutely, we make. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know how to respond to that because you're absolutely right, and it is true. Uh, textile fabrics and then text also means to weave with words, weave with ideas, weave with mm -hmm. concepts. And drawing, for me, is essentially making visible these mm -hmm. ideas, mm -hmm. making you know, thought visible mm -hmm. in the visual language. So uh, yes, um, my mom would send me to you know, to buy threads and fabric and materials, and I had to go back a few times because I just didn't really match the color well. Because that's not right; it's still too dark or too light, what have you. So this is where all this thing kind of comes in. This is how my mom and I communicated mm -hmm. in a certain kind of way. I mean, you know, mm. um, she liked my work, but she couldn't really, you know, understand them so much. I mean, you know. Um, she would often say, why don't you just kind of draw someone with a nice pretty dress or someone standing there kind of beautifully, you know, why do you have all this kind of absurd, you know, structure coming through? And I would tell her, this is part of my, you know, the way I see the world and how, how the world is constructed around me. Mm -hmm. But there are moments where she comes into play subconsciously. And this is one, one of the moments, again, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, mm -hmm. the kind of integration. And, and, and roots integrate underground, mm -hmm. you know, with other forms of other, you know, plants and trees or have you. And they're like rhizomes. It's just that kind of philosophy of being essential, asymmetrical, you know, mm -hmm. um, connecting to uh, being multiple, mm -hmm. like, like, like a ginger root, for example, mm -hmm. you know, that has no kind of hierarchy, that it just, you know, mm -hmm. spreads mm -hmm. out. So my mom, uh, an impression, I mean, on, on my, my, my life was substantial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I could talk about it fully now. Mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. you in, in this case. So this was quite, a, 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 say, a, a commemorative, say, you know, section that mm -hmm. somehow speaks mm -hmm. to, to this, this individual. Now, what intrigues me is your mother was a seamstress. She embroidered. In fact, mm -hmm. this is, uh, you're tipping your hat to right. her embroidery here. Mm -hmm. One of the culture wars uh, that we have is the relationship between craft and art. Mm -hmm. At what point does craft become art? At what point do we aestheticize what is practical, like seamstress, like embroiderer, and does it become high art? My sense is that you gravitated to drawing to mediate the gap between craft of your mother mm -hmm. and art of your professional career. I suppose, in a certain kind of way. I mean, there is craft and art. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is there any art, you know, in craft? Mm -hmm. um, that is up to the artist to kind of, you know, respond, or the, mm -hmm. the individual, mm -hmm. and only that individual. I cannot speak on mm -hmm. their behalf. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, this identity um, was not something I chose mm -hmm. to, to be an artist. Mm -hmm. it, it just felt like it was a thing to do. Mm -hmm. So. It started off as being craft. I remember drawing at a very young age, you know, mimicking the, the, the paintings we had in our living room from the exterior of the living room. I wasn't allowed to enter, you mm -hmm. know, because it's like a pristine situation with my colors and what have you. And I was very young, you know, 10, 12, 13 years old, working away. So at that point, it's essentially about looking, about seeing. Craft deals with the same thing too. It's about mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. understanding the materials very much too. Mm -hmm. I would imagine in, in, in this particular case, 
um, as I um, went through the systems of, of education and I you know, began to kind of you know, take more into account in terms of the intention of the artist, these ideas of, of living, of being current, of somehow uh, connecting to the world around me, uh, a blend of biography, of autobiographical concerns, and of worldly current you know, issues mm -hmm. comes into play. I'm not, I, I'm not really sure I see, it, it depends, I see much of that in a certain kind of craft situation. Mm -hmm. But it all depends, I mean, I'm very careful about saying this, what craft mm -hmm. are we talking about? Mm -hmm. I, the, it's not about the material, it's essentially, I would imagine it's about how the artist begins to kind of relate to something beyond just the material. Mm -hmm. To kind of infuse the material with some kind of subjectivity, with, with some notion of, of, um, of uh, perhaps, you know, the conditions of the world, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and I, would, I would believe that this is what would, would make a difference, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to just a craft that is using the materials and the machinery to kind of replicate mm -hmm. numerously, a number of mm -hmm. times for mm -hmm. kind of commercial airport art. Uh, I mean, I don't consider that at all, but there is, I've seen some beautiful craft pieces that are sensational, mm -hmm. that speak to me about all the things that I was talking to, uh, to mm -hmm. you about. And I've seen some other stuff that is essentially, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, production. Yeah, so and production, thought, industrial yeah. replication, absolutely, absolutely. brings us into Walter Benjamin yeah. and art theory. Giuseppe DeLeo, thank you for taking the time you. to welcome. speak with us oh. about streams of healing. Um, I get the sense that perhaps the healing was as much yours. Absolutely. Well, you're very kind. Thank you so much for acknowledging. I really appreciate it. Thank art you. therapy in a very full, orbed, three-dimensional way. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to discover the art of Giuseppe DeLeo at his website, G-I-U-S-E-P-P-E-D-I-L-E-O-D-R-A-W-I-N-G dot com.